All right, next project to attempt to restore is this uh, HP. This is a Pavilion 304W Windows XP machine. And I believe this has a uh, probably an Athlon or an Athlon XP CPU in it. And as you can see, there's some grass stuck to the side of it. And you can see from these photos here, uh, this is the way it was dropped off. It had been sitting outside and the guy just dropped it off to me. And the whole side panel was, of course, covered with this grass. And uh, the other side was snow. So I took the side panels off. And I left it set next to the heater. It's been sitting there for a few days now. Um, just to, you know, get it dried out really good. I don't know how much moisture got inside of it. Let me spin this thing around quick. So we can take a look at the business side of it here. And uh, it didn't look like, you know, when I took the covers off, anything had really gotten wet in here. You can see there's still dry cobwebs and uh, the dust on the bottom in here seemed kind of dry. Uh, it's more cobwebs than dust in here. I think this thing has just been sitting for so long. And uh, the guy said before we put it outside that it didn't, um, it, it didn't work or whatever. It wouldn't stay on. I, I'm not sure what the deal is. But uh, now that it's dried out thoroughly for a few days, um, I'm just going to go ahead with this power supply. I'm not sure if this power supply is even good or not. I don't know anything about this. But I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to get it plugged in and we're going to see if this thing will actually work or not. And uh, if not, then we'll go through and see if we can figure out why and get it going. All right, so I got everything plugged into the back here, and I want to plug the power in. The green light came on on the power supply, and it's not flashing really fast or anything, so that's, that may be a good sign. And we're hooked up to the CRT here, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to push this power button and see what happens with it. Cross your fingers. Oh, I can actually hear something. The hard drive's spinning up. The monitor just clicked. And it's got Windows XP still installed on it, so that's a good sign. Nothing seems to be smoking. So that's actually really good news. And looking in here, there's a uh, OEM sound card and modem, uh, but there's also an empty AGP slot. So I'll have to find a decent AGP card to pop in there. And we'll see what we got actually for a CPU in here. And when I was checking out the the case, the side panels and everything look good. There's uh, there's a couple of scratches on on it like here, but there's a big gouge in it right there. There's a, like a nick right there, but overall, I guess for the age of the case, it's really not too too bad. I think this looks like disk storage. Yeah, no disks in there. But yeah, pretty neat. All right, so Windows is up and we've got a peacock background going on. And I've got no mouse yet. I'm assuming that's probably got to install the mouse driver. The uh, clock may be correct, I don't know. I'm not really sure, is it? No, nope, it's 11.15, so the clock's an hour off. That could just be because it was just daylight savings. But she is slow though. Wait to see if it actually installs the driver for his mouse so I can use it and the keyboard as well. I don't know if you guys can hear this hard drive here. It sounds very slow. And we have mouse. But boy, this thing's slow.
All right, so I got service pack three, Athlon XP eighteen hundred plus with uh, three at one point five gigahertz with uh, three hundred fifty two megabytes of RAM. It says so. Um, yeah, we can up the RAM, and I may have a better CPU for it, but I think we're going to just stick with the one that's in there now. When we put it back together, we'll we'll try to run that with a little more RAM and the uh, AGP graphics card and uh, see what we can do with this thing. So for now, I think I'm going to shut it down. I'm going to start disassembling it because this whole thing has to be cleaned out. Uh, I'm sure the heat sinks and stuff have to be repasted, and uh, then we'll get it all put back together, and we'll put a fresh install of Windows XP on it. Um, because I just don't feel like I see a lot of crap on there. That looks like it's probably, you know, OEM installed bullshit. So uh, I think it would just be easier to just do a fresh install on it. Yeah. And then uh, we'll come back and check it out. November 2002 That thing looks like it's been through hell Floppy drive, all in one convenient little caddy that swings out. Look at that little power supply. That thing is fucking tiny. What do we got here? 150 watt power supply. I think we could fit a, a bigger one in here too if our uh, this optical drive wasn't so long. I mean, the optical drive came all the way out to here. So I, I'll look around and see if I have a shorter one somewhere for that. Right. They say push, but they don't push that easy. There we go. That was a break one. Look at the dust on that. It's really not too bad from, you know, it's probably never been cleaned since 2002. Get some more stuff out of the way and we'll take a closer look at the board here. Alright, so you can see there's quite a bit of dust on that CPU heatsink and fan. Also on this rear fan here. Uh, pretty much everything has got, you know, quite a layer of dust on it in here. Surprisingly, I, I didn't, I never did check the uh, the date, but um, I think that battery might still be good, but we're going to replace it anyways, because I doubt it will be good for much longer. And uh, this is an interesting thing right here. I'm not really sure what this is. Um, it had a, you know, it has Molex power on it, and it's also got... Uh, Power, it looks like it goes down to an audio jack there. And I'm not sure if that's for a subwoofer or what, but uh, that's the card that's on the back there. And it also does have the uh, OEM sound card in it there. So, alright, I'm going to go ahead and get everything else out of here so we can get everything cleaned up really good. I don't know if you guys have ever had to, any of you guys had to deal with these old socket A connectors before. Oh, what a pain in the ass, I man. You're always so nervous you're going to break the clip. But, yeah, this is actually still quite pasty on there, which is surprising. All right, here's a good look at our uh, Athlon XP. And see, there's no, there's no IHS on top of this. That's just your bare die right there. So, uh, if you're not careful about putting your heat sinks on these, you can easily chip that die and then the, the chip is garbage. Might as well just throw it out at that point. And why is my focus so fucked? Alright, yeah, that looks a little better. Alright. So I gotta be careful with that CPU. Let's 
All right, we got some mismatched uh, PC2100 here, uh, which we already knew just by the uh, the mount that it showed in there. Um, we got 256 and uh, 128 right here, so that's what was in there. All right, so this thing here, still not sure what this is. Uh, oh, audio amp card. So it's an amplifier card. That's pretty interesting. Believe it or not, I don't think I've ever seen one of those before. Alright, there's our Sunon fan. We can take this whole assembly out so we'll be able to clean this entire thing here. I think this is going to clean up really nice. I actually don't mind the look of this computer at all. Alright. There's a sound card. C3DX. Modem. Zero use for that these days. Alright, let's get this board out and take a look at it. And it appears to be stuck. And it appears to be stuck right where this screw was right here. There we go. And that zip tie fit in there perfect. I was able to like hook hook it behind the board, slide it over there, and just pull up, and it came right out. All right, there's a uh, socket 462, or otherwise known as uh, socket A. Uh, capacitors all look good on here from just a quick view. A lot of times on these older boards, they're either leaking or bulged. I'll get a better look at them once I get everything cleaned off, but at first glance, everything appears really good on here. Yeah, primary and secondary IDE ports, 20 pin power connector, uh, your floppy cable port there, AGP, 3 PCI, and there's even a connector for a uh, chipset fan here if you were to mount a fan on that. Alright, time to strip the last few parts out of here, get everything cleaned up, and then uh, we'll come back, put it together, and see what we can do with it. The case parts are all washed and drying. They were scrubbed with hot soapy water. Uh, the motherboard, I basically just uh, brushed it off and uh, Hit it with a little bit of denatured alcohol. I tried to take this uh, chipset heat sink off and it's like cemented on, even popping a little uh, tabs that hold it down. Uh, that's cemented to the chip, so I'm not even gonna try and get that off. All right, so after a little research, seems this is the uh, VIA 266 chipset here. Uh, this jumper right here switches from uh, pins one, or if you put on these pins on the left, it's 100 megahertz and then that's 133, so. Um, 266 megahertz is the highest bus speed this will support. So we went with the uh, uh, Athlon XP 2000 Plus in here. And I just got to find a AGP card for it yet too. I've got a couple. I'm just not sure which one I want to use in here. All right, another quick thing is besides someone having a name written on the bottom, it's only had one foot left on here. Unfortunately, the other foot's gone. But I did find these, so I just have to glue these. They seem to fit perfectly in there. So all I got to do is just get some glue and glue them on there. And this will have uh, rear feet. The front has the the front panel uh, has the feet on the bottom for that. It's just molten plastic, but on the back it needs a little something. So I'm just going to use these here. All right, that was a chore. A lot of cussing, swearing just to get that bitch in there, but uh, didn't end up, having, end up having to pull the motherboard so I can kind of tuck these wires in the uh, five and quarter drive bay there and kind of put the power supply down here and kind of tilt it in. Then it went right in and slid back, so I probably should have done this before I put the motherboard in. Uh, that made it a hell of a lot easier. But now we should have uh, plenty of power for what we're doing here. All right, just did a quick test here, and unfortunately I think the 2000 plus chip is dead. So I put a 1700 plus back in there, 1800 plus, whatever one it was, I can't remember. Uh, and then it booted right up, so. All right, so a quick update. Uh, we've got it all back together now. Now you can see from that picture, I did have to fuck with this door. Uh, the little plastic pin was busted off, so I had to kind of heat up a metal wire and embed it in there and I put that on so it takes care of the pin on there. Another thing works great. Uh, cable management, well, and these, I mean, Cable management is keeping your cables out of your fans, so there's really no way to make it look neat. Just cram everything in there as best as you can and keep it out of your fans. 
Um, but everything in here was nice and clean. I've still got to add the sound card to it. We've got a, as soon as I figure out where I put it. And what's going on there? We got a, a sound blaster live that we're gonna put in there for the sound card. All right, so we got a few parts here. These are just some of the parts that were replaced. The 40 gig uh, IDE hard drive was replaced with a 160 gig IDE hard drive. So that's a, got a pretty big IDE drive in it right now. Uh, we tried to install the Athlon, two, Athlon uh, 2000 plus and apparently the CPU doesn't seem to work. So that's a bummer. Um, this is a JIR modem, of course we pulled out and the uh, OEM sound card that was in there. We replaced that with a sound blaster. Uh, we replaced the battery for the CMOS. Uh, as well as the uh, RAM. I don't know if you can see the RAM. We got some nice Corsair RAM in there now. That's DDR400. So it's got a total of uh, two gigs of RAM, which I think is the maximum that this uh, motherboard can hold. Uh, the optical drive was replaced with a DVD. I think it's a DVD RW, CD RW. Uh, as, as you can see, it's much shorter because we've got a bigger power supply in here. The other power supply came to about here, and the optical drive came almost to it. So we've got a bigger power supply in there. I think this was a 350 watt power supply and uh, it was a tight fit in there, but we got it in we got everything in here. So uh, I'm gonna go through and get the keyboard and mouse and monitor and everything hooked up and we'll see if it works. Everything's hooked up in the back here. We got a keyboard and mouse going. Got the old CRT hooked up and let's see if we get any action. All right, we've got some beeps probably because everything in the system has changed and I'm not sure how to get into BIOS on here so I'm just punching F2 and it looked like it was F1. Well there you go, obviously Windows 98 was on a 160 gig drive so uh, let me restart it. I'll try and get into the setup screen here. Blue 3 3000 bio screen and we're entering setup. Alright, little flickery shit going on here. Alright, obviously I need to set the date and time because I have a new battery in there. And yep, it's reading uh, 2 gigs of PC2100. So I, I don't think it, it's going to read any faster than that. You can't like, it's not like you can enable XMP on this. But um, anyways, we've got two gigs of RAM in there, so that's good. we got that maxed out. Um, Athlon XP 1800 plus, 1.533 gigahertz. Well, as it turns out, uh, this is the only AGP card I have besides the Voodoo 3 3000 that I used to post the PC with. Uh, this card was ridiculously filthy, so I had to clean it and replaced it, but now you can see that it is in fact the GeForce FX 5200. I threw it into PC anyways, but you know, it, it had a ton of issues. Uh, you can see in these game captures here, that's anywhere from a mild case of artifacts to just all-out full-blown screen cancer. Even if it started out okay, like it did on Need for Speed Underground, it soon went quickly to shit. So now I'm in the market for a decent AGP card, uh, 2002 to 2004 era. It, as it turns out, most decent cards are going for a pretty hefty price. So, um, you know, I, I did end up selling the Voodoo 3 3000, and now I'm I'm uh, looking to pick up. You know, like a Radeon card or something for see if I can find a decent deal. So, till then, watch out for that Corona, defend your TP, and I will see you guys on the next one.